You are listening to the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast, where you discover management insights and strategies for a successful dental practice. There are also interviews with key people in the industry who have advice and services to help you and your team achieve great success. Welcome to this week's episode of the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast and to introduce this wonderful guest to you because it's an area that I think is going to start booming in the dental practice industry and it is Siona Talene of her company Virtual Dental Management Australia. How are you Siona? I'm good Julie, I'm good. Thanks for having me on your show. That's my pleasure and I've been having so many conversations of late because down here, you're up there in central Queensland, you've been locked down as well, New South Wales has been locked down, certainly down in Victoria, we we hold the record. (laughs) 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 We've got the gold star for that and I've been speaking to a lot of dental practices about we already had a small pool of people to hire from. Now with mandated vaccinations, it's going to get even smaller. And I think one of the roles within the dental practice, I mean, the dentist has to be there on site. The nurse has to be there on site. It would be very difficult to replace the receptionist on site too, although you could have a little you know, iPad at the front desk saying, come on in and take a seat. <laughs> but one of the roles that I think can be shifted to virtual is the practice management role to a certain degree. What are your thoughts around that? Absolutely. The I know Victoria in particular are having a very hard time finding the right staff. And even if they find the right staff, what's often happening is people are getting promoted within the dental industry, which is fantastic. And I'm all for the receptionist moving up or the DAs moving up and expanding their knowledge and training. But what often often happens is they get thrown into this role of practice management without that training or the background knowledge of everything that goes into being a, a practice manager who is going to change the practice, who is going to streamline processes, who's going to increase the profit, uh, decrease expenses, uh, create that team harmony and that team environment and create a thriving dental practice, which is what everyone wants, a place where you enjoy going to work. And being a practice manager with experience and knowledge, um, I found the best way to do that to help more practices was to turn it virtually. And so many things, if one thing this pandemic has given us is the use of all the technology that's available now uh, to really connect with so many more people and to be able to provide services, aid and help training for these practices. And one of those things is virtual practice management and to be able to do that and offer that to practices and see them turn around, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly and you'd be aware as well that the term dental practice manager can mean different things in different practices. As you said, quite often it is the receptionist that's got some added responsibilities and they're deemed the practice manager or maybe the receptionist has been there for such a long time, the practice sees them as, as such a a facilitator of the team getting along well and refining systems that they are given that term of practice manager. But tell us a bit about your history. I was looking through all of your credentials and you've done quite a bit of study to call yourself a practice manager. (laughs) First of all, how did you get into the dental industry, Sienna? I actually fell into the dentistry a bit by accident. I completed high school, missed out on the course I wanted in university by two points. And I went, nope, that's it. I'm not going to go to university. Uh, you know, being all of 17, uh, fell into hairdressing definitely is not for me. I am not, um, creative enough or <laughs> for that. And I was looking through the newspaper at the time and circling job ads. And there were a lot of DA positions available. Um, at the time I didn't even know what a DA stood for. But I went, um, I got the job and I started in the dental industry and within that first week I fell in love with dentistry and I've been in dentistry now 23 plus years where I just loved every aspect of dentistry. So I started on the front desk, moved into dental nursing, got my Cert for in dental nursing, uh, did my radiology licences for intro and extra oral radiology 
I moved then across from Perth over to Queensland and started as a practice manager um, when I was 20 uh, and started learning in that. I love training. I love increasing my knowledge. I always think there's so much more that we can learn that we never stop learning and growing. So with my love of dental, I knew I couldn't be a dentist. Um, <laughs> I learned that pretty quickly on. I remember I was nursing at one job and handed, we just did a full upper extractions, uh, full upper clearance, and we were about to insert the full upper denture and I dropped it and it smashed into in front of the patient. And I was like, I, I, I didn't know what to say, but I learned very quickly on, I am not clinically um, too heavy handed and klutzy for that. Um, but I just love dentistry. So I put all my effort into learning how dental practices run, what makes them tick, what makes some practices more profitable, more enjoyable than others, um, and what holds people back from achieving that. Um, so throughout the 20 years as a manager, um, been practice manager, operations manager at a radiology clinic, been going around teaching dentists how to put implants on and use that 3D imaging software to mark out certain anatomy and how to implement it into practices, I kept coming back to dentistry and managing a team. What I did decide to do is focus on my strengths, and my strengths are very much compliance, making sure things are ordered, things are structured. Uh, what I hated is that I could never go away on a holiday when I was a manager because I would constantly get phone calls. As soon as I landed in um Wherever I went on a holiday, I'd have to check my messages and answer calls and follow up because the team weren't aware of how things flow or someone was sick and they got a temp in or a new girl was starting. And I found that putting systems into place, having the correct alignment, everyone knowing what to do, when to do it, uh, they were my strengths. They were my my strengths of making sure all the work health safety, all the compliance, all the accreditation, all the auditing, which I find a lot of practices don't do, is audit their own systems and make sure they're being followed up, even if they have them in place. And to me, that's one of the most important things because you can spend thousands going to courses, having all these systems put in, and they're fantastic. But if staff don't follow them, if they're not monitored and followed up, it's really just money down the drain. Like it needs to be followed up and monitored, reported on and analysed and constantly changing to make sure you're getting the most out of these systems in practice. For sure. I think it's one of the biggest issues. And you even mentioned on your website that sometimes we, you know, go to a course, we get all these great ideas. Oh, yes. We go, I'm going to implement that the minute I get back to the practice. It's going to be so awesome. And then a week later, it's all forgotten. You're like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you find that these notes from courses three months later and you're like, oh, I meant to do that. That would have been so good. I'll do that next week. And then something always happens. I've seen them on online forums as well where dentists go, I've just been to this great course. That was fantastic. What am I supposed to do with this information now? How am I supposed to put this into practice? I don't have time. Yeah, and there is such a skill to be learned at putting things into action because it's more than, and this is, I think, we um, we default back to, I told you how to do it, so do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then from every moment from that point on, there's frustration when they just didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but we need more than that. Even look at our own lives. If we set ourselves a goal mm -hmm. um, on New Year's Eve, we need to put a system in place that we're going to, push towards making affirmative action every day to actually achieve that goal, remind ourselves what the goal is. We need a whole bunch more than just saying, I should do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I completely agree with you. So everyone gets a real firm picture of the sort of things that you offer. It's all virtual. It's not on site at all. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. And can you just go through, touch on some of the services that you would provide to a dental practice to give everyone a good framework? Okay. I see it as the full practice management system. So I'm a certified registered BAS agent with the tax board. What that means is that I can do your, all the financial reporting, the accounting side of it, not prepare your tax at the end of the year. I liaise with the accountant. 
but it's all the payroll compliance issues with that. I mean, 43% of healthcare practices in Australia make mistakes every single time they do payroll. Um, you think it wouldn't start, surprise me. It's so complex. <laughs> it is. It's very complex. Um, and then you think of the staff shortages and it takes on average um, 52% of staff will leave if you make a mistake on their payroll twice in a row. Wow. Which is huge because yeah. t your team needs to know that they're valued. And mm. even if it's an honest mistake and we all make mistakes, um, it does put people off on the wrong foot um, with your employees and your team. Mm. Uh, so definitely payroll, your HR in relation to the payroll, accounting. So with the accounting, it's all the data entry, your um, accounts, invoices, payables. I print the financial statements at the end of the month and then we can compare those, turn them into percentages and compare them to the national average. So, for example, if your stock, I've seen practices with stock levels at 15% of their revenue. Wow. And, yeah, and ideally, like, the benchmark should be between 6 to 8%. Yeah. So what we've got to do then is look at that and go, okay, it's way too high. We need to implement some type of system to get that back down to here. So these are the options. This is what we could do. What's going to work in your dental practice? And the difference between Virtual Dental Management Australia providing that service and a general bookkeeper or a your current practice manager who is unfamiliar with the reporting of financial documents is that I've worked in dental practices. You know, I know what works, what doesn't work, and how different things affect the flow. It's different for a person to say that will work, but unless you've worked in dentistry, it's so specific dentistry that you need to know how it's actually going to affect the patient flow and how it's going to affect the patients at the end of the day. Mm. The other part of virtual dental management uh, is the consulting based off your financial reporting, um, which is what I just discussed then as well, and the virtual management itself. So that could be setting up new systems within your practice. It could be that you're a new dentist and you're starting a new clinic and you're doing it all by yourself at the start. You're liaising with these excellent fit out companies, but you've got all these new patient forms, compliance issues, uh, regulations. You've got to find your staff. You've got to train your staff. You've got to work out which autoclave am I going to use? Which tracking system am I going to use? How am I going to manage my stock? Where am I going to get my stock from? All of those things um, can be done by a virtual manager to make sure that when you open your practice, you're ready to hit the ground running. For practices that are already established, it could be looking at what system is falling down in place, what's going wrong at the moment, um, what is taking up your most time away from patients and how can we fix that? How can I take those tasks off you to give you that time that you need to focus on your patients because at the end of the day, focusing on your patients is how you're going to grow your business. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, you're, you're bringing my mind to uh, the brilliant Graham Middleton. He's a retired accountant now for dental practices down here in Victoria. I think he, yeah, he uh, helped practices all around Australia. But he's a big fan of the or what he has seen evidence of financial success within a dental practice is best achieved when there's two chairs and there's no practice manager and i completely support that i think that's quite possibly financially a very well set up process but i think what has what starts to happen COVID has just made this even worse is that there's a lot of compliance a lot of complexity around things that never used to be the case years ago and yes it all falls back on the owner to do that and it ends up being the owner saying I'm willing to give up some of the funds the profitability to get a bit more family time hobby times alone so I'm not so stressed at the end of every day I'm not working every day of the week four days a week in the surgery three days a week on the surgery yeah. and this is where practice managers can really take the load off take some mm -hmm. of those those tasks away from them and in addition to that you're delegating these tasks to somebody who has done all the further study in it this is their passion just like dentistry is the dentist's passion and you do all of, all of your further studies in around the clinical aspects of it mm -hmm. you're dele delegating these tasks to somebody who loves doing them 
That's it. Exactly. That You couldn't have put it spot on. One of my favorite sayings uh, for a dentist I worked with was, I will do that. You go back and work with the patients and you don't make money unless your hands are in someone's mouth. And I would spout that off to him if I saw him going to do something. Um, it even got to the point where I was designing his Cerex for him just so that he could keep working uh, with the patients because that's their that's what they've trained to do that's their passion that's their enjoyment and until they add a business degree along with a dental degree i mean these poor practice owners i know yourself you would have experienced it when you're a practice owner you're juggling so many balls on one time and to throw in that you need to be a perfect dentist as well and the stress of being a dentist itself mm. on top of that i Honestly, I don't know how practice owners and dentists, when they do both of them together, how that works. I agree with you. And I often reflect back to how easy I had it, really. You think to yourself, <laughs> I you know, owned and ran a dental practice for 10 years. I'm so awesome. But I didn't have to get my hands in the patient's mouth. All the time the dentist owner is normally sitting there doing the clinical work. I was out there doing all the other stuff that they would normally have to wait till the end of their clinical day to start doing. Yeah. And I was sitting on reception all the time too. It was really a great situation because I was the one, you know, I had everything at stake. And so I was making sure the customer service was magnificent, all the patient complaints Absolutely. were managed just beautifully but it is a large role practice management is a large role and if you want to create more balance and reduce stress and the pressures in, involved in your career then I think practice management is a, a great step to take now depending on the size of the practice again going back to Graham Middleton there are you know we've got to get the the equation right otherwise we're struggling with our profitability and there may be quite likely dental practices practice owners out there that's saying if I had four practitioners and 11 staff I could warrant getting a practice manager but I'm a single person in this practice or there's only a couple of us here at this practice I don't have the funds to be able to manage a full-time practice manager mm -hmm. but with the virtual stuff it can really be you cater to you hand over the responsibilities of, of this particular task to the degree that you can financially manage that absolutely what I'm realizing uh, as the business progresses is in some cases there is no practice manager uh, it's always good to have a touch person on site, obviously. But most of my practices do have an amazing practice managers that want to build their practice more and just aren't aware of how to take those next steps or don't have the time to take those next steps. Um, there's a lot of practice managers I know that are working till nine o'clock at night um, and they've got families. They, they're stressed. They're not enjoying it anymore. They're working on the weekends. I myself personally, I've been grocery shopping with four kids in tow and getting phone calls asking about a, a certain system on the weekend and the pressures involved with being a practice manager. It might just be one task that you want taken off your shoulders and implemented. It might be an ongoing thing. As you said, you don't have a practice manager. You want to ensure you're accredited, that you're completely compliant across the board. You want to set up those systems and then have someone monitor it and keep that flow going. So there is those different options and it really depends on each individual practice structure, their style and what's going to work with them. Mm, and, and you can work with any practice in Australia, can't you? Because you, are you, yeah. I know that Western Australia are different in terms of employment law and all the rest of it, but mm -hmm. in terms of compliance, is it all across the board in Australia? Pretty much. There are certain different ones, uh, but I guess like I've been in Melbourne, worked in Melbourne. I haven't worked in New South Wales. I've worked in Queensland. I've worked, I did my initial training in West Australia and worked in West Australia. So once you know the systems, you know how to find that compliance issues. I'm not going to say I know everything straight across the board, but I can guarantee you I know how to find it and implement it. So <laughs> that's it. But I know now I'll figure it out. Don't you worry? Oh, about yes. <laughs> As I said, you're always learning, always growing. And look, the compliance does change, it changes all the time. Um, I was looking a lot of this month, uh, each month for my Facebook group, I do try to. Uh, pick a topic and try and stick to it. So this month, October being Work Health Safe Month, National Work Health Safe Month, 
um, I was looking into a lot of the work health and safety issues. Now, we all do those courses in pretty much any training that we do, and it's often the worst part of the training. Everyone I know rolls their eyes, oh, yeah, this whole thing again. But talking to practices and saying, okay, well, do you have a fire evacuation plan in place? Oh, no. Okay, well, that is a compliance issue. If there is ever an issue, uh, Mm. you as the practice owner will be liable for that. Um, Mm. These aren't specific for dental. This is any business in Australia. So there's certain things that do need to be ticked off to make sure that your practice, you're protecting yourself as a practice owner, that you are providing a safe workspace for your team, for yourself and for your patients. So it's very important to always keep on top of it. But honestly, who has time for that when you're trying to treat patients and then you have that emergency call come through or you've got a broken tooth and it's five o'clock and you've got to get home and... (laughs) That's right. The timing is one of the biggest issues, certainly for my clients and club members as well. When do I get, am I supposed to get the time to do this stuff, all this important stuff? We know how important it is. We want to implement it, Mm -hmm. but we just don't have the time. And dental practices like legal practices and I imagine accounting practices too, they are, everything is structured around the patient filling that chair Mm -hmm. and we only have staff members start one half hour before the first patient arrives and they stay for one half hour after the last Mm -hmm. patient leaves and we don't have the affordance of time that other industries have such as my sister works in the banking industry and they have Mm -hmm. meetings like... (laughs) So many meetings. <laughs> Why can't we get the time? But that's just what we do. Exactly. Um, but dental practices are structured quite differently. And yeah. we do need to try to find time when, when we ca- where we can. But if we can't find the time, it doesn't reduce down the sense of urgency and importance that we have certain things in place. And exactly. the virtual practice management is a tremendous answer to that problem. It is. I truly believe it's going to help a lot of practices out around Australia, um, making sure that they're compliant, they meet health code, but also getting their systems in place, helping the team develop, helping them to grow. Um, my idea would be to to try and get it set up perfectly. And then all I need to do is just check in every couple of months. How is it going? Are they still in place? Are you still growing? Where do you want to go next? How are we going to move this forward? And that's my goal. I want to make sure that dentists aren't as stressed, that they can dedicate their time to patients and focus on the patient instead of, I've had dentists run out halfway through appointments because they've needed to take a call or they've had to sign forms or they've had someone's missing something and they have to go out and help them. And patients, their number one reason for not coming to a practice, apart from fear, is money. And they want to make sure that what they're paying, they're getting value for their money and that means a dentist they're dedicated to them for their set allocation of time and treatment i think that's the biggest thing that virtual management can provide is giving you back that time to to make sure that you're there for your patients yeah absolutely spot on with that spot on with that (laughs) i've often thought to myself when a dentist has to break away from that patient mm. if you flip the tables and the patient said hang on stop drilling i've got a call coming through oh i have <laughs> had that too like, <laughs> <laughs> or i've got to post this on instagram and you're like what <laughs> we don't interrupt this this no. is our time <laughs> but it's okay when we interrupt the patient and it, you're exactly right it is the same it's the give and take um we expect the patient to have their mouth open and stay still and provide us that time to help them. Um, But the patient expects the same from us as well. For sure, absolutely. They deserve that time and attention when they're paying for that time and attention as well. So you were mentioning before a systems audit. That sounds like a big task. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, once you have your systems in place, and there are certain systems, I've got a little checklist that I've developed where I'll go through and make sure you have certain systems in place to ensure you're compliant, is to make sure that those systems are in place, that they are followed through. Um, So it could be just a calendar app where reminders will pop up, hey, when was the last time you checked your EpiPen? Is that expired? Yeah. Need to go get that done. Or checked your first aid kit. 
I would do spot checks on dental notes as well. I would have a checklist on that to make sure that dentists are completing each of the points that they need to to ensure that they're protected from their insurance uh, if there's ever a, a claim against them, that they've got the notes to back it up. So it's not just front office, how are they answering the phones? Are they entering patients correctly? Are they following an appointment schedule book uh, if you're doing the pre-booking thing? Are the huddles being followed through? Is each patient getting their lab work? If not, why not? To make sure that any system that you've put in place is being followed up. So for each new system, I'll just put a little check mark. One month in, let's check it. How is it going? Where are we at with that? If it's not flowing the way it should why isn't it following the way it should what could we do instead if that's not working for your practice what is it is it training is it interrupting the workflow what's going on with it uh addressing the issue and then continually monitoring it um it's like a a, it's it's a circle process that you need to do it's a never-ending circle you need to come up with the plan uh work through the plan implement it train them but then the one that always gets left behind is the monitoring and the auditing of the systems. Uh, and that's for any system that you have in place. For sure. I agree. I mean, systems are such an extraordinary thing when they're done well. <laughs> they are. Can you imagine working at a practice where if the receptionist is calls in sick and suddenly your staring nurse has to jump out and handle front office, can you imagine knowing and not worrying that when Mrs. Brown rings up with a broken tooth, she's going to get treated the same way as one of your other patients. Or have you been at front desk before? I'm sure this has happened to you, um, where your patient comes out and goes, oh, no, I don't want, I, I'm going to wait for Jenny to um, to take my order because she always looks after me. And you suddenly <laughs> go, well, what's she doing that's different? Yeah. Are there discounts being handed out? Is one patient being treated differently to another? Mm. Um, because I can guarantee you patients will talk and it will come back to bite you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I think that's you know, hitting on something that I haven't really considered before because quite often I certainly have heard, I'm going to wait for the other receptionist mm-hmm. to come back and speak to her because she looks after me best. So it may not be because they're getting discount, but because I know she's got my back. I know Mm. she's the one that's going to help me find a solution to whatever issue that I've got. Yeah. But that receptionist is called Jenny, but that Jenny receptionist is also my younger sister's name as well. I just realised I'm using my mum's name. (laughs) Well, I have yet to meet a Jenny that's not delightful. There we go. She is delightful. <laughs> so, I don't mind the name Jenny. I, every Jenny I come across, I'm like, you better be delightful. Don't ruin it. <laughs> so, when, so when Jenny is getting that kind of feedback around her, let's systematise it. Jenny, can you train all of yeah. us on how you're building rapport, how you're developing that trust, how you're having patients leave here knowing that you're the one that's going to look after them? Let's Because we can systematise everything exactly and the adherence to the system that allows us to be productive efficient working in a stress-free environment and key providing that consistently high level oh, customer yes. service yes absolutely and that's what you want to do you want your patients to know that no matter when they come in no matter what's wrong they're always going to get that high level of service mm-hmm. and that's it it all comes down to systems it all comes down to the systems and the training of those uh, and the monitoring of making sure they're followed through. Yeah. Would you be able to also help practices if they don't have a practice manual, they've got, they've got one, but it hasn't really been addressed for a long period of time. Do you do work around practice manuals as well? Yeah, I'm developing a couple at the moment um, where it's specific to that practice. So the process for that is they send me what they have in place um, and then I discuss it with either the practice owner or the current manager or whoever their point of call for me to contact is. Uh, and we go through it. I'll do a shared Google document. They can see my progress all the way through. I'll put the legal ones in there of what needs to be done, um, but also what they already have in place as well, if it is working for them. Mm-hmm. From there, we look at, okay, this is what needs to be done. How are we implementing that into your practice? So for me, first, the system needs to come into place. From there, we work out your policy and your procedures. 
and then the training of the staff. So that all goes into the practice manual. And you were talking before around team management and talking around the systems and the training around the systems as well. Uh, is part of your work working with the team to make sure they're doing all the things they need to be doing in order to get these systems systematized? <laughs> That one's still an ongoing process. The reason being COVID has shut, I mean, being a mother of four children, I'm not going to risk flying into state at the moment and getting shut out of Queensland. So I have had a pra couple of practices reach out and say they want me to come down to a full walk walkthrough and audit their whole systems. Um, and I've just had to say, look, I can't do that. I'm not doing that now while there's while this is all going, not until everything opens up again. So at the moment we are doing more Zoom training and really that's more about me showing them this is what's happened, this is what we can do to implement it, this is how it's going to work into your practice. Um, but at the end of the day it is up to the individual practice, just like when they go to a course or a seminar or they have consultants come in, they need to do the work as well. They need to put these things into action and take accountability. Um, no one's going to come in and do it all for you. You have to take those steps to improve your business as well. We can give you the foundations, uh, but you need to take accountability to make sure mm. it can get implemented into your practice. Yeah, and, and you know, human nature comes creeping on in and... <laughs> And with our best intentions, quite often team members will think, oh, yeah, they, you, the boss said he wanted to implement this thing, but nothing's being spoken about it the first week, so we won't bother doing that thing. And so mm -hmm. we've got to do whatever we can to maintain the level of importance over the new thing, exactly. maintain the sense of urgency to get it done straight mm -hmm. away as well. And one of the biggest things that I suggest is in, add it to the morning huddle. The minute you've got a new system, the new way of doing things, a new insight that you want to make sure gets implemented and top of mind for all your team members, just have a daily focus and that daily focus mm -hmm. it can be the same for a week two weeks a month three months depending on the complexity of the new thing because that's the sort of thing that we all need we need yeah. these reminders as i Absolutely. said before when we you know, make our own life goals for ourselves we need to be reminded what they are because you know you forget by the next day <laughs> absolutely and there's so much study around that as well whereas if you put something to the focus of your mind uh or manifest it, you put it there at the front of your mind. How often do you say, looking for a new car to buy, and then suddenly you see that new car brand everywhere on the roads? That's yeah. because they didn't just miraculously appear. It's because it's at the forefront of your mind and your mind becomes aware of it. And you're 100% right. You need to say it in the huddle. You need to have it constantly brought up and reminded Otherwise, the change just is not going to happen. Everyone will fall back into their old routine and yeah. it's not going to work. So you do, you need that accountability. You need that constant, we are going to do that. Let's tick off these steps. Let's do this. It's also groovy, Siona. So I'm imagining there's practices out there, as we were mentioning before, They've been to a seminar, they found out this new project that they want to get on top of. Maybe they are going to be introducing a hygienist where there hasn't been a hygienist before. Maybe they're going to be onboarding a new team member. With these short-term projects, are these the sort of things they can come to you and get assistance with as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Through my years of management, we've opened dental facial aesthetic clinics within the dental practice. Uh, open myofacial or introduced orthodontics, uh, all these different projects, these new projects, they all have their own requirements around them. Uh, everything from the space to your marketing to the setup or how you're promoting it, but also your team training on the awareness of that so that they can communicate that to your patients and let them know about this exciting new project that's coming up, this new addition of services that you can offer to help those patients. So with those projects, they come a lot of time consuming to away from your regular running of a practice. So what Virtual Dental Management Australia allows is that for you can go, look, I'm looking at setting this up or um, there's a laboratory and they want to open 
offer a prosthetic on site. Um, suddenly they need to know all the stereo requirements. It could be help me set up this room. You need to research these equipment. You're changing software providers. The time that goes into just researching the software and what's going to work for you and your needs all takes away from your working in your business. So there are all certain projects or tasks uh, that you can allocate out. Maybe you want to promote this new service by doing a seminar. Uh, then you're looking at the event management side of it, of getting that implemented, uh, getting it out there to certain whoever you're targeting for that audience. They're all things that we can help with to get those projects going uh, and off the ground. I love it. I love it. And we are also virtual now. It, it does change the way we promote at times. One of the things that I found out about from a podcast from America a few years ago, and I've always been a big supporter of it with clients that I speak with, is if you've got a practice growth strategy, mm -hmm. one of the most effective things you can do is have an open night, a series of open nights. Maybe yeah. it's about implants or wisdom teeth extractions or dentures or mm -hmm. aesthetics, whatever the topic is. It could even be the link between stroke and, and heart health and, and, and your oral disease. health as well. Yeah. And have these open nights where you invite your existing patients, but also members of the community as well, who may be patients of somebody else's in the community. And you invite them in. You know, they've, you know, over a couple of drinks in the waiting room, get a tour of the practice, meet all the delightful staff members, mm -hmm. do a quick, you know, 10 to 15 minute PowerPoint presentation. The dentist is building up his authority and his or her authority and likability to the audience. Everyone gets to see everybody and have a physical experience there and a good, happy experience there. And you also become known as the source of great knowledge and yeah. the go-to dental practice yeah. for awareness in the area. So, but that can be flipped online. And if you need mm -hmm. assistance, I mean, we need to do a lot of research into how is the best way we can do that do we use zoom is there other 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 platforms how do we do it all the rest and so when we're looking at that kind of project that can really help develop your image as a dental practice within your community mm -hmm. i imagine those sort of things you know just go straight to the virtual practice manager exactly <laughs> and say, do this? <laughs> <laughs> that's it exactly i mean sometimes we sit there and we look at a project and then suddenly all the implications that come along with it of what needs all the steps to get to that final product. Sometimes you just throw up your hand and go, I, no, no, not for me. I, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Um, I don't have time for that. I would love to do it. Mm. And how many times has it just not happened because you don't have that support? You don't have someone that can do that groundwork for you. Um, and quite often in dental, I've been witness to this many times over my career when I've worked in dental practices and when I've consulted as well. There's this great new idea yeah. and it gets brought up at the staff meeting and they ask the question, who'd like to take this on? And everyone's like, don't say anything. <laughs> Avoid eye contact. And they all think to themselves, quite rightly, so I don't have time for anything else on top of my plate, you know, on, on my plate. I don't have the time to do it. And so... Because that's, don't let the lack of time, which is a legitimate concern, don't let that stop you from progressing down a path you want to as a dental practice because there's exactly. another option out there. Exactly. A hundred percent agree. You often have great ideas, great dreams and things, and you need to follow through with them and you need to still be able to have a, a thriving business as well. Uh, but be able to do that and to grow, to be able to have a strategic plan in place, to know where you're going and work out the steps on how you're going to get there and have someone to support you, cheer you along and help make sure they're implemented. It's like, yep, this step is done. Okay, this is what we're doing next. We're going to have it done by this date. Uh, let's do it. Great. I love it. Now, you mentioned before, I know that you've got a blog that you always keep up to date. I love it. I love a good <laughs> blog. It's a wonderful way of sharing insights, but also learn, tapping into the knowledge that you have. And so I do encourage people to jump onto your website, which I've got, there's a link to your website in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And just to read it out to you right now, it is VDMA, so Virtual Dental Management Australia, vdma.com.au that's correct 
but you also have a Facebook group and you were mentioning that you focus some of your posts around whatever's going on in dental at the, t- at the time. Tell me a little bit more about your content on there. So at the moment, as I said, this month is Work Health Safety Week and I am focusing on that. So it's all different compliance issues, even little tips, uh, little tricks that you can start implementing in your practice. Or maybe you see it and you go, actually, I didn't know I needed to do that. I better just run and go do that now, make sure that's set up. So that is up there. It's Virtual Dental Management Australia um, and that will come up and you can just like or follow the page. Uh, We've had months focusing on team building and and that month I think I did a weekly challenge where the first week you had to buy your team morning tea and actually sit down with them to enjoy that cup of coffee, not just go like, here's the cake, I'm out, (laughs) but spend some time getting to know your team as well on a more personal level. Uh, So there's little things like that. It's not all paperwork uh, and compliance. There's some funny things and different things like that along there. I quite enjoy doing it. It's not something I ever thought I would enjoy, but as soon as I started, I actually loved developing the content and sharing my knowledge and helping practice owners around and practice managers around Australia. I love that. I love it. So the link to your Facebook group is going to be in the show notes as well so people can just jump on it and, as you say, like or follow the page and get all those lovely insights coming through. Working in a dental practice, you become very insular, uh, don't you? It's like your own family. You know how your own family works. You know the dynamics within that. Mm-hmm. But rarely do you go into other families with the interest of how do they do things? I wonder if they do things that we would find helpful in yeah. our family. The same is with dental practices. So even just the getting a different perspective, a different take, what are other practices doing that's wildly great? That's a great benefit to getting an outside person coming in and doing a bit of a systems check, having a chat with your team members, going through a bit of leadership discussion with the owner of the practice itself as well what are you doing to promote yourself start getting a different perspective yeah a fresh set of eyes always always is beneficial well Fiona it's been an absolute delight to have you on this episode of the JPPS podcast and hopefully a lot of dental practices out there have now realize that there is additional help and support that they can get if they wanted to contact you and find out your pricing or how you could possibly be beneficial to their practice what's their best next step absolutely if they just head to the website www.vdma.com.au there's a book your call button and you just click that it will send it straight through to my meeting schedule uh you can book a free half an hour consultation with me where we'll just get to know each other a little bit more and what your requirements are and what you're actually looking for and then how we could help you with that fantastic well it's a tremendous service as i say i think it's going to be one that even if there are dental practices out there right now saying i'm if it could work virtually i think we're going to be forced down that path because as we said before there's all these barriers in place Mm -hmm. to getting the normal recruitment happening the way we have in the past and it may you know we thought that that the COVID thing would only last for a few weeks yes (laughs) down the track so I think opening ourselves up to these sort of new ways of getting certain roles within the organizations managed is a great step thank you Fiona I've loved our chat I have loved being on here thank you very much Julie my pleasure see you later Hey, if you enjoyed listening to this episode, you should join the club. The club members receive an online lunch and learn every week where I share insights, systems and strategies to improve the success of your practice. These lunch and learns could not be easier. They are recording so you can watch them at a time that suit you. Members also have full access to the library of all of our past topics. It is a powerful and effective way to upskill your team. I hope to see you there.